and uh, Principal Maria Bird from St. Joe's has returned with company. Maria, good morning. Welcome back. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, everybody. It's good to have you with us again. Thanks for having us on. And you brought with you a couple of guests as well. <laughs> yes. And yes. Maria knows these people too. I do. I do. Um, again, I'm truth be told, I've uh, in the last segment I talked about my husband's involvement in treatment court, but uh, these are folks I know very well. Mm -hmm. um, Father Gallagher is my pastor at St. Joe's, um, and Pat Michelle, newly ordained deacon. Um, who I know uh, very well there as well. They're great folks and, um, and happy to have them on board to talk about the future of Catholic high school education in Martinsburg. Father and Gallagher, Eastern good morning. Thank good you for morning, coming good in. Good morning. Thank you for having us. And Deacon Michelle, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're very pleased to be here. Thank you. Let's, Absolutely. Let's talk about how this has become a reality from uh, a concept and a dream to something that is uh, now actually going to happen. Principal Bird, can you take out, tell us a little bit about the process here? Yes, sure. We were being cautious since that interview. We have been taking baby steps, but we're waiting on the official word from the bishop. So that's how things work. And finally, it was released last week with the letter of his blessing and sharing that he's even give, providing financial support. So we are definitely grateful for the diocese and Bishop Mark Brennan for supporting this project. Um, we have been working behind the scenes, and we're very excited that we can finally put this forth. I've gotten a lot of questions about, is this a just a 9th and 10th grade? I just want to clarify from the get-go that the plan is to go all the way to 12th grade, so we are very excited to, to get started. No, this is going to be on the two phases, so we need a year for planning, for hiring the administration team, and to put together curriculum and all the necessary steps. So it will be on the following year, 25-26 for the 9th and the 10th grades, and then the following for the 11th and 12th, 26, 27. And physically, the location? Yes, I know this is being the million dollar question again. And we do have a plan, and they can, they can pat here, and Father can share more, they literally just close on the property. We, we have purchased a building that will allow us to uh, move from the main building some pre-k grades by doing that we can bring some middle school back from the newly remodeled building across the street so that the main building now can house the kindergarten through seven grades and then that newly remodeled building which used to be the whole school <laughs> right can now be the ninth um i'm sorry the eighth nine and tenth grades so we do have the capacity that opens the four classrooms we needed for at least two classrooms for nine and two classrooms for tenth grade so that is the plan for the immediate um, to grade levels. And do you have an idea of what the cost will be to attend for a full year? And I'm going to let our money guy say that. Yes, I do have an idea, the but I know guy. that he handles that. So I'm going to let Deacon Pat tell you how affordable, especially after Hope Scholarship, how affordable this is. So um, just so you know a little bit about my background, I was a school superintendent and a regional superintendent in New York uh, for 32 years. Uh, and uh, have had the opportunity in my career to stand up five other high schools. So my main job here is to stand up the new high school. Uh, obviously, the fiscal end is really important. Uh, we're uh, looking at, uh, a t uh, we have budgeted for a tuition of $10,500 per student, uh, deducting the amount of money it would uh, you would get from HOPE uh, so that's probably about a $5,500 a year cost to 6000 depending on how much hope is per year because it varies. Uh, and uh, that, I think, would be quite affordable for most families in the region. So will you allow a monthly payment plan of Absolutely. $500 a month or something? Oh, like that? Yes. yes, yes. We have 10 and 12-month payment plans. We also have uh, some funds dedicated to support those families in need. So the bishop himself, not just for Catholics, but for non-Catholics, provides a tuition assistance program called TAP. And families are encouraged to apply. That is in existence now. We utilize it for the K through A grades. It's wonderful. And in addition, we also have, uh, we fundraise for tuition support. And so talk a little bit, um, any one of you, a little bit about the history um, of St. Joseph's School um, as an elementary school, as a high school at one time, closing of the high school, and why a Catholic high school is so important in Martinsburg in the Eastern Panhandle. I'm looking at you, Father. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, yes, as 
I'm sure many of our listeners know that uh, our school was founded by the Daughters of Charity uh, in 1888, I believe, and um, Three. that school uh, has been in continuous existence here at St. Joseph in Martinsburg, and uh, I think it very early uh, went up to uh, the 12th grade, and uh, unfortunately, they did not have the 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 sustainable population in the student population to uh, maintain the high school so in in 1971 they graduated their last uh high school class uh and then it uh they shuddered after that so uh, i know uh, i hear from many uh people that they would have loved to have had the chance to graduate from St. Joseph High School. These uh, who would have been uh, high school seniors in the 70s and, and, and whatnot. But they, they remember the sisters in St. Joseph School with uh, much fond memories. I think the, the importance of Catholic education cannot be understated. Um, for me, this is a very important part of the mission of evangelization. Now, evangelization is a big, big word, fancy word for just uh, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and so one of the key aspects of, of the Catholic education is that every student uh, who attends our school uh, has religion class. So they get to know uh, who Jesus is. They get to know uh, what he is about, our salvation, and how we are invited to be a part of his plan of salvation. So uh, we, uh, myself, Deacon Pat, uh, Principal uh, Bird, the bishop, over in Wheeling, we all have this vision that Catholic education is very important. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, so I think it's very important, excuse me, um, I think it's very important because in the Eastern Panhandle as a whole, we are the only Catholic school. Uh, and especially since our demographics seem to be rapidly changing with the influx of, uh, mm -hmm. of people coming in from Virginia and Maryland and other parts uh, because of Washington, D.C. and Baltimore and other places, we, uh, we desperately, I think, need, the need is there, the desire is there for Catholic education um, in our environment and our culture there, there seems to be uh, a a desire to um, how you say uh, make people very libertine or a fancy way of doing whatever you want however you want whenever you want um, which uh, is somewhat attractive but unfortunately it it often leads to unhealthy uh, lifestyles um, so we desire to provide a, a safe, uh, happy, healthy uh, environment that uh, can fully educate and fully inspire uh, our youth. Well, and I think the, ca the model of Catholic education um, really, again, a, a product myself, um, really changed dramatically um, in the late 60s, 70s, with the um, lack of sisters um, who were the prime educators at that time, and with less um, women going into that area of ministry, then the whole model for how inexpensive it was, because that was their job, but also their vocation was all tied together, um, that caused the closure of many Catholic schools across the country, I think, at that time. So St. Joe's was not unique, but boy, people still have really fond memories. I'm looking at some of the comments on our um, Facebook feed of, of people who remember 
all kinds of things that happened during that time. So um, we also know, Pat probably knows more than most, that the cost of, of building and maintaining a school, a high school, is maybe a little bit different than an elementary school um, because you have all of those programs that go along with it. Talk a little bit about, because people have all kinds of memories about basketball at St. Joe's and um, you know, and we know there's a very vibrant arts program now. Yeah. Is that going to be able to be sustained in a in a high school? Format? Oh, I definitely think it can be sustained in a high school. Uh, we have uh, a lot of interested uh, community members. Uh, a specific business person who actually approached me last week about sponsoring a soccer team for the high school. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, plans for a basketball team. Uh, eventually, oh, coach. she's been there for forty something years. Right. Vic Lupus, are yeah. you listening? Okay, right. Sorry. So yeah, Vic is actually going to be a big part of us planning the sports program. Uh, and as Maria pointed out, uh, Principal Bird, uh, that um, we uh, are going to spend this year planning and making sure everything starts on a really firm footing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, sports is definitely on the radar. Uh, academic and career preparation is also on the radar. Uh, our model is basically going to be working towards uh, not only a high school diploma for our students, but an associate's degree or a uh, work credential as well. Ooh, talk about that a little bit. Yes. Um, the partnership with Blue Ridge, yes? And, and Shepard, we have been okay. having conversations. Yeah, we've been talking with both Shepard and uh, Blue Ridge. Um, both of them have been wonderfully uh, open uh, to having our students uh, take classes there as well. Uh, as taking uh, classes in, you know, at our high school. So um, that's something we're planning out with them. Uh, it's in the infant stage, uh, obviously, uh, but I think uh, both uh, opportunities are quite uh, good for our children and will allow them to experience uh, career um, uh, training. Uh, so I always say uh, our students, if you, if you want to go to a great four-year school, come to our high school. If you want to be a welder, come to our high school. Because uh, either way, we're going to find a pathway that fits you and helps you to grow as a person and be prepared for either the workforce or college experience. You left out the occupation of shepherd. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> well, no, actually, that's an important occupation. Sure. Uh, but uh, so far, I haven't had a lot of uh, requests for that. F Father's going to disagree with you. We should all be shepherds, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Right? I want to ask you the number of students you think you might be able to accommodate at the peak here once this gets some yes. momentum. Well, just based on the survey that we put out, and the, I mean, we have folks uh, asking, can I give you $1,000 to save the spot? Because that was a question that Bishop bet. himself designed. So based on that, um, not, not long ago, just a few months ago, I would say we can accommodate 60. There's an interest of at least 60 families who were willing to even put some seed money or reserve a spot, if you would. And per class? With, uh, no, all together, just for the first ninth and 10th grades to start modestly, but we do have capacity to receive up to 100 students. And that is just two grade levels. So this is why we want to do this gradually to make sure. We're also, I, I should share, have gained almost, I mean, 80 something students in the last two years with the Hope Scholarship and the things that we are doing. Uh, we are touring every day. There is a high demand and there are waiting, waiting lists for the grades, at least kindergarten through third, and then waiting lists for other grade levels in our pre-K program. So I would say that if we have more capacity, we could receive more. <laughs> really, the main limit for us right now is the square footage and the amount of classrooms we have, but the demand and the desire to be in our school is there. Talk to me about the hiring process for teachers, instruction. Yes. Are you having the same problems public schools are having? I think I'll say uh, this on behalf of all my brothers and sisters educators in the area, in, in the country probably, that this has been the biggest challenge. There is definitely a crisis and a shortage of educators in the country right now, and it only got worse after COVID. That being said, we early on in May were almost fully staffed. We have a demand also for educators who want to be a part of something different out of the little pool of educators that we have. Uh, we only have one pending vacancy and very nice interviews this week, so I think we're going to be fine. You know, I'm hearing in other places where friends of mine, where they have to start the school year with long-term substitutes. So 
I say that um, our approach is uh, to have this Christian environment that some um, this particular group of teachers are looking for to have to be a part of you know they don't want to worry about the nonsense <laughs> or politics or mm -hmm. some policy that truly really gets on the way you know that's not why you went into teaching um, I know that's not why I went into teaching so they just went to teach talk a little bit Pat about what the Hope Scholarship has done um, to sort of forward this initiative because you know one of the one of the struggles certainly with St. Maria Goretti, St. John's, um, is the tuition and affordability. Mm -hmm. um, so when you can take a certain amount off the top, if you will, I would imagine that's um, a great incentive to families as well. Uh, strategically, one of the things we think about when we're designing a school is the cost of facilities. Uh, and I think with Maria Goretti, for example, one of the reasons why they um, struggled uh, and eventually had to close was because of the cost of the facility. They were renting it for about a quarter of a million dollars a year. Uh, and that became a real struggle for them to keep the tuition at a reasonable level. I can't speak for St. John's. I don't know a lot about that. Uh, but I do know that we are purposefully thinking outside of the box to keep our facilities costs down so that we can make our tuition affordable, because that's a real driver. I would much rather spend our money on high-quality educators than on square footage if we can, we can pull that off. So, um, so we're looking at that quite closely. I just wanted to play off a little bit of what Maria was saying about nonsense. What I'm hearing from teachers, and I, I was a public educator for a very long time, and I love the public education system. Yes. Uh, I do think we've lost our way a little bit, uh, and uh, that is, that's part of the situation. Uh, and we get, we get teachers that come to us willing to take, uh, you know, I don't know what. 20% off. Yeah, so 20 we pay literally 80% off of what the Berkeley County School but, system But they spend. have an environment where children respect them, where parents are responsive, where they can teach uh, uh, academics without politics being interweaved into it. So for those teachers, they're looking for that, and that's, that's what they're getting. Is, uh, I went to Catholic grade school through eighth grade. I have the marks to prove it, by the way. <laughs> you could do corporal punishment back then. Uh, discipline is another issue that uh, parents are having and teachers are complaining yes. about in public schools. How does St. Joe's deal with discipline? So right now we have, um, from the Dominican Sisters, we implement a program based on virtues in education. That's the name of the program. And uh, our approach is not to chastise the children or ask, why do you do this? You know, sometimes as a parent and as an educator, you fall into the trap of, why, what were you thinking? And that is not an approach that's effective. Today, you want to um, get to the source. There is something deeper in the child and the person that is causing these um, this outside behaviors. There's almost a cry for help. So we teach the opposite of, to the behavior you know, the opposite to the vice, we teach the virtue. Do you think there was a way that you could increase your patience? You know, is it, was it possible that you um, that you wait and thought about it? You know, we begin our disciplining, uh, at least I know personally, with prayer. And um, the children respond really well to how can we work together, you know, to be more charitable next time. We don't have to say everything we're thinking or, you know, how can we uh, increase self-control? I know you didn't. So I think in general, it's just the education in virtue to focus on the good instead of focusing on the negative is working well for us. I'm not uh, sitting here proclaiming that we don't have any behaviors, <laughs> you know. Uh, that wouldn't be true. But when these situations arise, I think our approach and the fact that our parents are, um, I mean, they're sacrificing. Not all our parents are well off. They are paying tuition for the children to be there. And do we say that to the children sometimes? Yes. Uh, it's okay for them to understand the sacrifice of their parents for them to attend our school. So this, uh, this approach of being responsible to what the gift they've been giving and increasing in virtue, I think, works well. The fact that God is in the mix, right? And work Do you also uh, uh, accept special needs students and such and disabilities? That of, is of a great sorts? question. We do have some students with a special learning plan. Unfortunately, we're not at this point, and, and I hope in the future we will, do not have a special education program. But I'd like to give a shout out to Berkeley County. They have been fabulous and they work with us. If we ever suspect any um, learning disability, you know, we immediately begin to collect data and to meet with them 
and they are so accommodating. They come to our school, and all the testing is free to the parents, so we are able to provide. Uh, at the moment, we feel that we cannot meet the need of the child sometimes, but in mutual agreement, we have to separate because it's all about the child. You know, do we, I want to be clear, St. Joseph School is a wonderful school. It might not be for everybody mm -hmm. at this point, you know, and that's something we have to recognize. So. That's, that's where we are. I'd just like to concur with Maria's comment about Berkeley County. The Berkeley County school system has been a joy to work with. They're, they're great people. They are. Some yeah. of their members sit on our advisory board, some yep. of their leaders. So. Well, the Gallagher, we have about three minutes left, and you've been quiet for way too long. <laughs> so Preach! Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's time to help close down the show here yeah. and, and discuss the importance of what you folks are doing in the community. Yeah, I think... Um, Again, there, there is a great need for uh, Catholic education. Um, the, so I went to uh, my uh, university alma mater is Wheeling Jesuit University. Uh, and one of the things that I learned there uh, was to try to be a, a man for others. Uh, that's one of the concepts that St. Ignatius of Loyola uh, imbued with his 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 order, um, and that we, in caring for the whole person, we strive to make men and women for others. So uh, it's only when we kind of uh, are able to be fully uh, educated, fully um, alive with the, the love of Christ, and uh, we're able to use our, our knowledge, our experience for the good of others right that's that's the whole goal in the christian life to to participate in love with christ for the sake of others and the salvation of others um i just want to say that we you know like to the cost of uh, the school you know like uh high school education is just way it's much more expensive uh because of all of the different academics you know you start to have specialized teachers and then specialized labs and uh, sports which everybody loves sports but sports aren't necessarily always the freest right you know like i can give you a, a soccer ball and that's pretty cheap but if i were to ask for football well, that's a little more uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, so I think that's one of the reasons why we're trying to make it as affordable as possible and with the Hope Scholarship that is uh, much more within reason. And um, I, I think uh, we have a great administrative team that is always looking at uh, our f our financial picture because uh, we don't we as the the fundamental landscape between when the sisters were uh, running it and now has vastly changed and we're trying to keep up uh, so that we don't actually have to close because with over a hundred years well over a hundred years of uh, experience uh, in in existence educating we are happy to close <laughs> this episode. That is a, yeah. but, but open your door. Yeah, and so open I, the school. I, I never and get to do this school. on a Sunday, but Father, you're out of time. Yeah. Hey, uh, good, good to have you all in studio. Thank you so Thank much, you and best Marty. of luck to you.